get better pictures faster. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you a UI that is quick, it is simplified, it is concentrated just on having fun with AI. And on top of that, it uses much less resources. Let's get started. So here's a quick look on how this UI is looking. And as you can see, it is super simple. You have the preview of what you're rendering. Down here is the prompt you're rendering. And then you have a generate button. So you are focused on your art. Of course, there is more settings you have here. Input image, you can do in painting, you can do out painting. You also have advanced settings, but all of that is hidden so that you can stay focused on playing with amazing prompts. Now here's how to install that. And that is also super simple. We are on the GitHub page. And when you scroll down a little bit, you come here to the Windows install section. There's a link here for a seven set file. And this can be unpacked, for example, with WinRAR, but also with other tools. Inside of that, you're going to find these two folders and the file. As you can see from one of the folders, this has an embedded Python. This will run right from the folder. It's portable also. The run bad file here is starting Python and then running the UI. There is nothing to install. However, as you can see down here, this is going to download the SDXL base 1.009 model and also the refiner model for that. And you need that because opening this UI is always checking if these two files are there. If you already have them, you can link to them. You don't need to download them again. Another thing that is important here to know is when you use the in painting for the first time, this is also going to download its own in paint focus model. You can, of course, also use your own in paint models if you want to. Here is a little advice for you. If you download the folders and you already have Automatic 1111 or any kind of other UI where you have already downloaded a lot of models, you want to go here into the focus folder in the unpacked folder that you've just downloaded. And in there, you're going to find the user path config dot text file. Now in that file, you're going to find a list here. The first one says model file path, and you simply copy the location of where your models are. Now there's one thing that's a little bit strange and specific about this. You can see that here you have these double lines and you need them in your direction too. Otherwise it's not going to work. You can see here that I'm using the location from automatic 1111 model stable diffusion so that I have all of my models to choose from inside of focus. After that, you're simply going to save the text file and then you want to double click on run bad so that this is starting the UI. Once this is done, you're ending up in the UI I have already showed you. And here is the thing. This is super simple, as you can see. And most of the time, the idea is that you are only writing the simple prompt down here and click on generate because focus is doing a lot of magic in the background for you. Now the magic can be found by clicking down here on advanced. This is going to open up a new section here on the right side where you can choose between the speed of the rendering and the quality of the rendering. No specific settings. This will do the job for you. Below that, you have different resolutions of ratios, no sliders, just the resolutions. You can select how many images you want to render at a time. And down here, if you would like to, you can also write a negative prompt. But Focus is going to create its own negative prompts for you. So this is not really a necessity. Now here's the next thing. If you go to the style tab, you're going to find a long list pre-created for you, the styling words for the positive and negative prompt to give you amazing results in that specific style. If you don't use that, this will automatically have the focus version two style and the default slightly cinematic style selected for you, which means that often the image are going to come out as photorealistic cinematic images. 
but of course you can also create other styles. So here, for example, I have created an old Chinese man in a cinematic photographic style, really beautiful. Then I selected a different style. And as you can see, this is more of a digital art style, looks very beautiful. Here we have more of a pop art style, also very, very nice. In the next image, we have our Chinese old guy in an art new style. And I find that also very beautiful. Next, we have a very cute rendition as a low poly version of the old bearded Chinese guy. Very, very cute. And last but not least, we have him as a legendary neon punk samurai. This one I really love the most. Now, just to remind you, all of these images are using the simple prompt old man sad long beard and then in round brackets samurai clothing and the only thing i do to change these styles is to select the styles from over here on the right side where there is tons and tons of styles to choose from on top of that you also have the advanced tab in here you can select the model you want to use from your model list in this case i'm selecting chugganaut xl you can also select an sdxl refiner in this case i have none because this model does doesn't need a refiner. And down here, you can also select Loras. Now, in that case, the UI itself comes with the offset example Lora for SDXL. And this is also pre selected for you. And with the slider over here, you can also, of course, select the weight of that specific Lora. Down here, it says advanced again. You can click on that. And there is a little extra section down here for sampling sharpness. So you can have this slider adjusted to your choice experiment with that and then also down here you have document and when you click on that link this will bring you to a documentation of the ui so this is as simple as it can be when we close the advanced section you can also see we have an input image section now this has multiple functions as you can see here on the right side and again this is doing most of the work and the settings for you you have different choices you can select an image here as an input and then create variations of that image in a subtle way or in a strong way as variations. Here I have an input image of a cowboy and then next you can see a subtle variation which is pretty close to the original and here we have a strong variation of that image. And then you can do an upscale by 1.5, 2, and then also a fast version of 2. You don't have to do any kind of settings for that. And if you have rendered an image up here, like we have with our neon punk samurai, you can simply grab that image and drag it down here to use it as an input for either the upscaling or for creating variations with that image. And as you can also see, we have here a second part for in painting and the out painting beta. When you have an image already loaded in the upscale or variation tab and you click on in painting, this should be automatically loaded into the in painting input. If it is not loaded, you can again either drag it down here or load it from a folder. Now for rendering the in painting, you can select on the right side the size of your brush and then you simply mark what you want to in paint, write the prompt up here and click on generate. This will generate the in painting for you. And then also below that you have here several selections for out painting. So on the left, the right, top or bottom, if you want to extend the images to the side. Now I have to say this is in beta and the results are not great. As you can see here, we have your original image with the cowboy and here we have an extended image. It's kind of good, but not really. So this still needs some work to get you better results. I have to say I really enjoy this simplified UI because it makes you much more focused on creating your art rather than playing around with a million different settings and extensions. Now, one thing I'm kind of missing here is the ability to nail down the seat if you want to play around with different prompt variations. And I invite you to try it out because it is super simple to use. It is portable and you will have a lot of fun with that. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.